So around a year ago we bought and installed these solar panels and a home battery to go along with it. Now with over a year's worth of data we can finally calculate whether or not this investment has already earned itself back. And this is no easy task. In this video I will run the numbers and tell you when a solar panel installation is beneficial for you and whether or not you should buy a home battery to go along with it. So without further ado, let's run the numbers. We are going to calculate how long it would take for us in order to earn everything back. But in order to do that, we first need to know how much everything has cost. For the solar panels, we paid 5,114.44 euros for an installation of 12 panels with a total capacity of 4,680 watt peak. Watt peak meaning the total theoretical max amount they can produce at a time. We paid an additional 5,910.56 euro for a 10 kilowatt hour battery. So in total we paid 11,025 euros. However, we also took out a loan over five years for this purchase, since interest rates were still extremely low at the time, which over a span of five years will cost us an extra 351.60 euros, bringing our total cost to 11,376.60 euros. All right, so far for the easy part, but now it's getting tricky. At the time, the Belgian government was still handing out large subsidies for both the solar panels and the home batteries which are being reduced each year, over a time span of five years. For example, for us this was a 1302 euro grant for the solar panels and 2550 for the battery. But if you were to install the same installation as we did in 2023, you would get only 850 euros for the battery and about 650 for the solar panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the results with them first and then show the results without them afterwards. So I hope you are still with me because now we need to calculate how much we saved the first year so we can calculate our break-even time. And here I do want to state that I will be making some assumptions since it's going to be nigh impossible to calculate everything accurately. For example, we had a variable contract, which means that the price of electricity can fluctuate even from day to day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an average over the entire year. Also, for any excess power that you generate, you do receive a bit of money. However, this amount depends heavily on the time of year, the place or country where you live, and also on the contract with your energy provider. From what I could gather, almost all European countries do use this system in one way or another. So anyway, back to my math. In total, we paid 392.93 euro for 816.57 kilowatts of power. This was mostly during the winter when the solar panels were barely generating anything. This gives us an average price per kilowatt hour of 0.48.12 euros. We also need to subtract the amount in euro which we injected back onto the net. In total we received 367.98 euros for this. Key thing to note here is that we had a suboptimal energy provider who didn't give that much for excess power. Due to this we switched energy providers recently who give a lot more for that power and which would bring our total cost to zero or maybe even under zero next year. But for us, in this non-optimal case, our total bill over an entire year was just 30 euros.86. To put this into perspective, in total we used 2524.62 kilowatt hours over a period of one year from July 2021 to the end of June 2022. If we had just bought all our power over an entire year from the net for an average price of 0.4812 euros, we would have had a bill of 1214.85 euros total. So now we can finally calculate the return over a single year. 1214.85 euros minus 30.86, which brings our total to 1183 0.99 euros total that we saved over the entire first year. On a total purchase price of 11,376 euros, this means you will break even in about nine and a half years. With the subsidies, we only needed to compensate 7,524 euros, 
So due to this our break even is reduced to slightly over 6 years at our current power consumption. So that's pretty nice. However, there are also a few key things to note here. We bought an oversized setup for our current usage. Had we just bought a smaller home battery and a smaller solar panel array, we would have had a better return on investment. The reason, however, that we didn't do this was because the subsidies allowed us to buy a more future-proof setup. And in this case, the added cost of the larger installation wasn't that high. Secondly, we also bought it larger than we needed to because we have two small kids at home and assumed our electricity usage would go up in the near future as well as that we might install a heat pump or maybe even get an electric car in the nearer future, which would also drive up our energy consumption. Had we had a better contract with our energy provider, we could have saved even more this year. The more power that you use yourself, the more you actually save. This is because you still get more worth for your money if you use your generated power yourself immediately instead of putting it on the grid first and then buying it back later when you need it yourself. And this is also a key factor. On average it is said that you can get above 70% self-sufficiency with a home battery and solar panels on an annual basis. A figure we noticed to be correct as well. However we still need to look at the alternative of just buying solar panels. For this I need to go back to the beginning where I said our solar panels were 5114.44 euros without the subsidies. In reality though the cost would be slightly less since we needed a hybrid transformer which costs a little bit more and I will talk more on that later. With just solar panels you can get a 30% self-sufficiency if you are diligent with your energy like for example putting uh, your clothes in the dryer or in your washing mach machine during the day when the sun is shining. This is of course on average on an annual basis. Remember that with a battery this was 70%. So in this case we would have saved about 364.45 euro over the course of a year through self-consumption and an additional 40% of power that goes to the net instead of the battery for which you do receive a bit of money. As I said, this amount depends heavily on where you live and the contract you have with your energy provider. We also needed to switch to a newer one to get a much better rate. If I do need to make an educated guess, I have noticed that this is often between a factor 1 to 3 to 1 to 4. So let's say you inject 4 kilowatt hours onto the net, you can get back roughly 1 kilowatt hour free another time. In this scenario, had we not had the battery, we could send back another 1253.74 kilowatt hours to the net instead of the battery. If we divide this by 4 we get 313.46 and if we multiply this by our average power cost 0.4812 we get savings of 150.82 euros per year. This together with our earlier savings that we actually got on our invoice would give us a total savings on of our first year of 882.61 euros. This would give a break-even time of under six years for, in our case, an oversized setup, a non-ideal energy provider and factoring in unnecessary costs which we wouldn't have had without installing the battery and not factoring in the subsidies. With them we would cut down the cost to 3812 euros which would bring back the break-even to about four years. However, I did not calculate in any loans or interest rates in this case. So where does that all leave us? Well, a lot of it still remains guesswork since energy prices fluctuate even day to day. However, especially with these energy prices, which I don't see them declining anytime soon, you will earn back your investment in a matter of years. And at this rate, it is basically printing money. So for solar panels, the conclusion is pretty obvious. If you do have your own house, then I would suggest you get them ASAP. Done and done. You do still need to compare energy providers to get the most out of them though. For the battery, however, it is more of a mixed bag since they have proven to be capable of delivering a nice ROI when subsidies are involved 
but without them they are still a little bit too expensive. And in most cases I cannot recommend them yet. There are however a few reasons for when it could be interesting to get a home battery. You do not own an electric car and you do want to use most of the power of your solar panels yourself. If you do have an electric car however and you are capable of dumping all your excess solar power in that battery then I would suggest you do that. But then it won't be that beneficial to get a home battery one fifth or even one tenth the size of a car or an electric car battery. In that case it won't make much of a difference. Another reason is if you want a backup system for blackouts, which if you do want that then you do need to account for additional costs for a system that will allow that. Mine for example can't without buying addition or an additional module of some kind. If it is heavily subsidized to a point where the break-even time drops significantly then it can also be a good purchase. If the country where you live is going to implement a peak tariff, this means that you will have to pay more for your power during peak hours, so for example between 6 and 8 in the evening. From the moment you are watching this they have dropped in price significantly. If you think energy prices are going to rise even further in the future and you want to account for that scenario. Also too much future proofing is completely idiotic. Solar power and battery technology is evolving at a rapid pace. I had a salesman smooth talking me and saying that even after 20 years their panels would still produce more than the competition. However, their offer was also twice as expensive. Over the last 20 years, solar panels have become a hell of a lot cheaper by a factor of 10. So it would be the same right now as if you were still bragging about having a Nokia 3310. What I do mean to say is that technology is evolving at a rapid pace and what was once high-tech 20 years ago certainly isn't that high-tech anymore today. And within 15 years I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't more beneficial to just upgrade your current setup to a whole new one. Next, use as much of your own power as possible. This will give you the best return. Compare energy providers. Some may give more for excess power you send back to the energy grid and this can drastically impact your return on investment. Next, compare different offers of companies that install solar setups. I've noticed that solar panels have become incredibly reliable across the board and these companies will often pull the our solar panels are more robust and reliable shtick to try to sell them to you. In most cases these days this is complete bullcrap to justify the higher price. In this case you do need to make out for yourself whether or not you want to buy into that or not. Next, if you are on the fence of installing a home battery but don't want to buy one now, then I would suggest you ask for a hybrid transformer. With a hybrid transformer you can pretty much plug and play a home battery down the line, which means you don't have to repurchase an entire transformer in order to do that. The difference in price is pretty much negligible, but if you do need to pay for an entirely new transformer, it, it can set you back a thousand euros or more. In my opinion, a home battery without a solar panel setup is pretty useless from a cost perspective. So if they are trying to sell that to you, I personally wouldn't bother. And lastly, be wary of salesmen trying to sell you optimizers. They have two main reasons for when you should have them. The first reason is that if you have shadow during the day from a chimney or a tree for example on your solar panel array. In that case optimizers will provide you with the maximum possible power production. The second reason is that if you want to see on your app which solar panel is producing how much power. This also has the added benefit that if one solar panel breaks it is a lot easier to find the culprit and replace that specific solar panel. In any other case I personally wouldn't bother since they can easily add between 60 to 100 euros or more per panel on top of the cost of your solar array. And this is just for a small increase in production if you do not have shadow on your roof. However, solar panel installers will be very eager to sell this to you since they do get a large margin on this. So don't fall into that trap. 
I hope you liked the video. It took a lot of time to make. So if you found it interesting, then please do leave a like and subscribe. And then if you have any questions on this specific topic, then leave them down below. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.